Good evening, sports fans. Welcome to another episode of the Shipe Sports Talk Show. I am your host, as always, Matthew Shipe, joined always by the best co hosts out there, Mr. Anthony, Mr. Chris. How are you gentlemen doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing well as well. I was waiting. It was that, that awkward pause where you're like, do I let yeah, Chris right. go first? Or do I let <laughs> go first? <laughs> uh, good. As you fans can see, Paul's not with us this evening. He's celebrating my aunt's birthday, so happy birthday to my aunt. Happy birthday. So today, you see, Happy birthday. most of us are dressed up right now. That's because we are doing our live mock draft tonight. The draft is one week away. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, a week away. It's Thursday. Yep, a week away, first rounds. So what we're doing tonight is we have drew numbers. Each one of us are going to have picks for a team. But before we get to that, let's do a quick playoff update for these playoffs that we have going on. Let's first talk the NBA. Chris, let's go local, me and you. Wizards, I'm saying it's going to be a sweep. What do you think? I don't think it's going to be a sweep. There's five or no six? Way. Five. So They're you going think to win you, a game. They win a game They're and the Wizards close it out at home. Exactly. Any way this goes to a seven? I don't think so. Okay. I think the worst case is a, is a game six, but the Wizards right now are too hot. All right, Anthony. We're, we're playing. We're playing MMA and basketball, so there's no way. Oh yeah, Millsap's a little, a little <laughs> tool bag. Anthony, from the outside looking in, what do you think of the Wizards so far, especially the play of John Wall these first two games? Uh, the Wizards have been very impressive to this point, um, even in the regular season. But I think that they're showing a lot in the playoffs that they shouldn't be, uh, you know, they shouldn't be slept on here, you know. And I think that against the Hawks, they're a very formidable team. Um, and I think this is a big series for them. If they can get out of the series in five games, that's even if they can get out of it in four, I mean, it's huge. Even five, though, it's going to go a long way for them. So I think that's going to benefit them. All right, let's talk about their potential second round matchup. We have the Bulls right now, two up on the Celtics. Now, real quick, unfortunately, Isaiah Thomas's sister passed away in a car accident a couple right. days. Do you think he should have just said, no one would have been mad at him. Do you think he should have played that first game? Or do you think maybe this is hanging over the team? Or are the Bulls just matching up pretty good against the Celtics? I, th I don't think it has anything to do with that. You think um, it's just the matchup? The Bulls are just... Are just. I, th I just... Yeah, I think just right now, no one else is showing up on the Celtics. Um, I mean, Isaiah Thomas is showing up. He's doing what he's been doing all season long. But uh, the rest of the team is just not there. Um, I, I don't think it's his fault at all. All right. Well, let's look at this. If you're a Wizards fan right now, Anthony, from your outside looking in, you're a Wizards fan. Are you liking this right now? Chicago's up 2-0? You know, man, when you see stuff like this where a team's a heavy favorite and they're getting, you know, she be concerned. The way it, it, it's, it's a bit concerning at the same time. I think the biggest thing that's working in the Bulls' favor right now, um, obviously, like you said, uh, very sad situation with Isaiah Thomas' sister. I don't think that was the issue. He came out and scored over 30 points in that first game. Um, I think it's the big thing for them is, like Chris said, there's no one else really helping him, and it's a lot of inexperience. When you look at the Bulls, yeah. they have Dwayne Wade, a guy that's won Rondo. multiple championships there. They got Rondo, a guy that won with Boston and won championships there. You know, Jimmy Butler, another another player that you just don't hear enough. You know, he's not in that top tier of MVP talk, but he's right there as another great player in the league. Lopez. They have a lot of great pieces. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I think that addition of Wade has really helped them. And I think the inexperience of the Celtics in the playoffs, you know, is just what's, uh, you know, what's the telling tale right now. I don't think that the, the Bulls are going to sweep them, but I do think that it's going to be a tough climb for the Celtics to get back into it. And I don't think they'll overcome that 2-0 um, home. Those first two home losses, I think, will come back and hurt them because they were one of the best teams in the East when it came to uh, clutch performances at home, if not the best. And as you saw, they really came out kind of having a rough first two games. So. For me personally, I hope to see the Celtics because I think they're one of the only few teams that could give the Cavaliers a real push. You don't think the Wizards can at all? I think they can give them a push, but I don't. I think the only team that's, like I said, at home, the Celtics are a different team. They're not showing it right now. So if they wake up and they can make it to the next round, I think they're the only team that will give them, the Cavaliers, a really tough time. I think the Wizards I... could push them. I think that... Um, the uh, I think another team I think the Bucks might surprise people. I don't think they're gonna you know win it or beat them, but I think that the best team to beat the Cavaliers would be the Celtics. I think the Wizards are there in the conversation. I just don't think they could do it. See, I think see that's where I think you're wrong. I think the Wizards can be because you saw the first game they played went to OT because of a very 
lucky. We all can agree that was a lucky shot by LeBron, that three-pointer. He probably doesn't make that again. Then the second game, hey, the starters were off with a minute left. I mean, they blew. They almost basically blew him out. I think the Wizards are the team that can beat the Cavs. You, you, you at, at the moment, I would say yes. I mean, if we if we talk about at, at the end of the regular season, I don't think we'd be saying the same no, thing. No, the Wizards struggled you, at the end, but right now, the right. way they're playing, the way because Gortat's playing like a first team center right now. I mean, I mean, not to go back real quick. Dwight Howard, man, he has just gone from stardom to just getting pushed around by everyone. Thought Howard Gortat Howard could be the guy. Gortat's got a chip on his shoulder because people don't remember. He was Howard's backup in Orlando, so maybe he's yeah, out to Polish prove. Hammer. He's out to prove something. So, going through the yeah. other series real quick, you said Toronto, Milwaukee, they're tied. San Antonio's up 2 0. That should be, you know, they should be able to five game that. Uh, Houston's up 2 0. Uh, That's Golden's, a big surprise to me that Houston's up 2 0. And the way they're winning those games. Clippers. That first game was, was a dis- destruction. Mm-hmm. Clippers, Jazz 1 1. Gold State, Portland 2 0. Now, real quick, just. Before we move to hockey real quick, ja- uh, Pacers could have won both the first games. The K- Cleveland's not playing 100% right now. They're playing at 80% for some reason. They're not playing a full thing. So I think look, and still- look for Indiana to maybe take both these games in Indiana. No, it ain't going to happen. They ain't, losing bo- they ain't losing both of those games on the road. I think Cleveland is going to move on. Uh, you're going to get most of these top top teams. I think the Celtics are the one team that might be the you know the number one seed that obviously I think is going to be sitting out the next round if they can't get it together. They they are in a must win the next two games. All right, so let's move over to hockey right now. We got Rangers, Montreal, they're playing. They're tied 2-2. Montreal's winning right now 1-0. Pittsburgh's up I believe was it 3-1 on Columbus. They're winning yeah, 1-0 right now. Chicago down 0-3 to to Nashville. I think that thing gets closed out Tonight in Nashville, I think it's going to be a sweep because they've been convinced. They've been, you know, I, I think I think it's a sweep tonight. I think this is it. Right, but the, the Blackhawks are such a good team, though. I mean, they're they're the number one seed. They in are, but I don't think they. I think eventually they're, they're they're going to be out of this playoff. Yeah, but not tonight. There's no I way that is. you back them into you, you don't back them into a corner in a do or die situation. They're going to come out fighting. I don't think they're going to go down tonight. All right, now let's get to the local team. Washington, Toronto, two-two. Washington pulled that out last night. First off, Chris, did you watch the game? Yeah, I did. Honestly, that goal in the third quarter, third period. I'm sorry, should have been allowed. I mean, Bastrom's being pushed and pulled into the goalie. I mean, how how can you say it's his fault? But I I don't I don't think that was that third period on game three. You let things go the entire game, and then you call a penalty with 15 seconds left. Come on now, you you can't do that. Especially I don't know, man. That was. It was it was exactly what we wanted to do in terms of coming out a gate and, and an away game and almost a must win situation to keep our hopes alive and you know bring it home uh, for basically a best two out of three series. Now uh, we came out, we started strong. I think it was four one at one point. That's exactly what we wanted. So that way we could kind of take it easy a little bit. But I really wanted us to just step on their throats. Matthews just... is that rookie beginning of the year that scored like a hat trick in his first game, wasn't it? Correct. Austin, Austin Matthews, yeah. Okay, yeah. that was him. Okay, I the remember that. Beliefs, yeah, he's a star. Yeah, he's okay. a star in the making. Now, Brandon Holpe, I was hearing on the radio Radiant. today, he's given up 14 goals, this and that. How many of his goals, though, 80% have been off of someone's skates? I mean, can you, you – I have heard a hockey analyst, deflections, you can't blame pretty much on the goalie because he's actually going to make yeah. the save and it goes. 14 right. goals for Holpe, I really don't – I maybe count – Maybe three of those against him. The other ones have just been that were they, legitimate. They're right. putting people in the front. But that save he made in game three, Anthony, you saw it. Chris, I know you saw it where he came out. That was one of those where you're a Cats fan. You're like, no, 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 no. Okay. Whew. That that took some balls. Oh, yeah. That took That's some a huge serious. Come out, they're coming that far out of net. And if for any reason, even if the puck slips by you, you're, it's over. There's no one that behind took you. That some there was serious no defender, Yeah, no, it's a great play. And it's a, it was a. You know, to me, it's a game changer. You know, and that changes. Fortunately, everything. they didn't win the game, but I tell you what, you know who's come to play this series? Everyone always sometimes have been given OV crap in the playoffs. He's got three goals. Tom Wilson is finally developing into the player they wanted him to be. They thought, yeah, he's a hard hitter, but they thought he could be that save he made last night in the first period won us the game. The way he saw yeah, that go around, and then the score, what was it, fifty something seconds later? Yeah, it did. 
Incredible. The, the, the biggest threat to the Washington Capitals Pittsburgh Penguins. is the Washington Capitals. No, oh, it's oh. the Washington Capitals, <laughs> man. They're, the, they're I, their own worst enemy. I they're agree. A team that is, to me, every year this is a team, and you guys know because you watch them very often, they should win every that year. should be in the finals very on a regular basis. This should be a team that you're talking about as a dynasty at this point or a team that's been competing at least in the Eastern Conference Finals or the finals the past five years. And they, they, for some reason, they get 100-point seasons, have phenomenal seasons, and those first two rounds, they just can't find a way out of them. If they can find a way past this series, I think they could. I mean, I don't see why they can't go all the way. Again, I know Pittsburgh's going to be a tough competition for them. I want to pray. I like. You don't understand. I think the Capitals. Yeah, I think the Capitals are the better are the better team. I think they're the best team in the East. They've shown it all year. So, real quick, they show it every year, oh, yeah. pretty much. Pretty much. So we'll see what happens with that. That's going to be in um, tomorrow night, which I don't understand. The hockey's more physical. They play every other night, but the NBA's like now every three days. That just annoys me. But um, real quick, baseball recap: local teams, Baltimore, first place in AL East. They're nine and four. Um, Toronto in that division. I think Chris or Anthony, Chris, you picked them to make the playoffs, didn't you? Or Anthony? I'm, I don't remember. I might Down have. I can't remember. So Baltimore, first place. The other. Local team, D.C., first place, 9-5. and five. Mets are right there. Big, crucial series starting Friday night. It's too early, man. It's too early to be worrying about that nonsense I, right now. I think I think playing, I think the two series we're we in have. April. We're talking crucial in April, man. Come as on. they no, say, they, they say you, you six can't. Games. You got six games. If they get swept in both of them, then, yeah, that could be a huge detriment. That's why I said, as you say, series, like, they say this. You can't win a division in April. You can sure as hell lose one in April. And we saw that we'll with say. Toronto. That's a big hole they're in. So, well, I mean, you're not even talking about the team in the AL East that you should be talking about most. No one believed. I'm, I'm just. I don't know about you, but I'm shocked about the Yankees. I picked them to make the playoffs as a wild card. A just seven. Are they on a, are they on an eight remember. game win streak or a seven game win streak? Right I think now, it's eight right I know now. They were on Did you seven. see that home yeah. run Judge hit last night? Good lord! Kid six that's seven. Just, that's the scariest thing about that team is they are. This is the first time you can think of in recent memory where the Yankees don't have that payroll that exceeds like some crazy you know that you're oh well in two years when machado players. and harper are free agents give them two years well, I'm saying, but they got young guys right now and they're winning with them so imagine if they do get a harper or machado this is going to make or machado it makes them more you know like That's appealing right. like oh let me go to this team because these guys have young talent and i could go there and insert myself and be you know just help that lineup even more so it's and get paid. If you're, if you're, yeah, exactly. If you're in the AL East, definitely. And if you're in the, the AL altogether, you got to be – this is a team to watch. They're young, and they're ready to go. And as, as you know from experience in the past, they're not afraid to spend. No. So, it's that time for the Shife Sports Talk 2017 Mock Draft. Last year, previous past two years, we've just predicted your top 20. You know, Actually, we've gone through top 10, and then we do surprise picks. This year, we're doing a full 32 mock <laughs> Each of us have teams we picked. I did number generated, uh, number generation to see what we picked. But the only things that weren't generated was I will pick Tennessee's picks. Chris will have the Ruskin pick. Anthony will have the Giant pick. Sorry, guys. I know it's not fair. I got two picks. But, hey, we uh, okay. kind of – Your team needs it more. It's we trade rape the Rams. Hey, it's finally good to have a top ten pick and didn't earn it. Actually, it was just traded to us. So, Rams, thank you for yeah. making that trade. I think it's yeah. karma for, uh, for what they two, got for RG3. Spot, no big deal, right? Yeah. <laughs> Good guy. So, with that being said, I think the clock for the draft to start has hit zero. So, <clears throat> I'd like to welcome everyone to the 2017 Shipe Sports Talk Mock Draft. Each pick will be probably within 10, 15 seconds. After each pick, all of us will give an explanation of why we made the pick. So, the 2017 draft is open. On the clock are the Cleveland Browns. Picking for the Browns are Chris. Chris? Your selection, please. For the Cleveland Browns as the number one overall pick, we select Robert Griffin III out of Baylor. <laughs> <laughs> he had to do it. I had to, bro. I had to. You know I had to. All right. So the real pick, I think this is really a no-brainer for everyone, um, except – for the Cleveland Browns, I really have heard that they're not 100% sold on Miles Garrett, but I think they would be stupid not to draft him number one overall. Um, you know, I think they've they've graded him very close to what J.J. Watt was coming out of Wisconsin uh, and Jadavion Clowney when he came out of college too. So I, Miles Garrett, I think 
far and away should be the number one draft pick. All right, so Miles Garrett, number one to the Browns. The 49ers are now on the clock. I have the pick. So I've been back and forth with this pick. I was thinking Mitch Trubisky, but then I'm still thinking that uh, who they signed? Brandon Hoyer is just a holdover till Kirk Cousins. So I'm actually going to go on the defensive side of the ball, and I'm going to go with I'm going to go with Jonathan Allen, defensive lineman from Alabama. I like the defensive player. I think he's going to make that line a stud. Defense wins championships, and I think they don't need a quarterback because they are holding over for Kirk Cousins. So Jonathan Allen to the 49ers with that second pick. Uh, the Bears are on the clock, and we are back to Chris again. So for the Bears, number three overall, um, I think my first pick would have been Jonathan Allen for the Bears. I feel like they need a lot of help everywhere, honestly. Mm -hmm. uh, on the uh, Up front, in the back, in terms of a – uh, cornerback and safety help, uh, but I'm going to go with Marshawn Lattimore from Ohio State. Uh, ran a, a sub 4-4-40 four, four, uh, at the combine. He can basically shut down an entire half of the of the field. So I think that he's going to be a number one uh, cornerback for the team. I want you to know that at the fifth pick right now for the Titans, I'm scrambling right now. I'm going through draft boards right now because of that. I'm I'm being serious. Yeah. If I'm in the I Titans really front office, he's my pick. I'm scrambling right now to figure out what to do. Now i got to wait to see the next one. But I'm scrambling. Yep. I'm being honest. Yep, Marshawn Lattimore is That's, the pick. See this is, see, this is why I wanted to do it in this format because now you have to scramble because that was my guy. So now All right, number the four. Jacksonville Jaguars are on the clock at number four. Anthony is finally up. All right, with the fourth pick in the draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars will select defensive end Solomon Thomas from Stanford. Um, I was big on Jonathan Allen here, and I know that a lot of people want to see Leonard Fournette go here. I just know Tom Coughlin. Tom Coughlin's one of those guys that likes. He thinks you can win the you can win the fights in the trenches, as you say. So he's gonna. I think he's gonna want to. You know, I know they got Calais Campbell, but I think he's gonna continue to bulk up that defense. And I think with running backs, I think Fournette's good. I feel like with Ivory and Yeldon already there, though, you could get a running back later on. Don't don't spend your top five pick here when you could grab a defensive lineman that could you know change that line and you have someone youthful. So with the fourth pick, I'm going to go with Solomon Thomas for the Jaguars. I'm glad you talked about the running back situation because it seems like pretty much every mock draft I've seen, the Jaguars they have the Jaguars taken Leonard Fournette. So yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. I, I really I really agree with you. I don't I think it's a little early to draft a running back there. Um, you know, he, he is a game changer. Don't get me wrong. He's a game changer. Yeah. I just don't think it fits what the Jaguars are trying to do, especially, exactly. with, like you said, bringing in Coughlin. Um, he knows that defense will win you a championship. Yeah, and Coughlin's not a flashy move guy. I can't see him yeah. taking a run back that early. I just yeah. I just don't. I think Fournette is a good pick if they end up doing it. But like you said, too, you got two guys there, and you just pay, you just shelled out $30-plus million plus to Chris Ivory to sign him in free agency two mm -hmm. off-seasons ago. So that's, I think it's a little early to give up Yeldon on Ivory, right? Yep. As you see, I'm looking down, trying to figure out what I'm going to do. So, on the clock now. Well, the you're Tennessee, on the clock. The Tennessee so. Titans, I we will select. I'm going to go with Jamal Adams from LSU, safety. Um, I was debating between him and Mike Williams, but I feel like even though we did just sign the um, – Anthony, how do we pronounce him? The guy from the Jaguars. Oh, Jonathan Cyprian. Even though we did just sign him, I think Adams is a real big playmaker. I think he can help out definitely in that field. Um, he's a better, I think, coverage man. So I'm going to go with Jamal Adams for the Titans. All right. So now on the sixth pick, we have the New York Jets. Anthony, you're back on the clock. All right. With uh, the sixth pick, the New York Jets will select quarterback Deshaun Watson out of Clemson. Wait, what? Uh, Wow, there's the first big surprise of the draft. Deshaun. I'm sorry, I said Deshaun. Deshaun. Uh, that's all good. Um, I think that this guy's a star in the making. Uh, I really don't understand why so many teams think that this guy should slip. Um, I understand he might not have the pocket presence that they think, but he showed a lot of poise in that game and national television. I know it's a college team, but think about it, man. Alabama's got a better defense than some of these pro teams. And, uh, you know, I just like it's what he brings to, to the table. That. And the Jets, this is a big city. You know, they play in New York, even though it's technically New Jersey. They don't have a franchise quarterback on that roster. You can argue that Hackenberg's going to maybe get there one day. Oh, he's but horrible. But you're, you're in a marquee 
you know, a marquee city with a with a football team that isn't really going fast, uh, going somewhere fast. If Lattimore's here, maybe you think about taking a corner to replace uh, Revis now. Right. But I think you got to If you can get Watson here at six, I think that's going to be. This could be a, a franchise changing move for them, and that's a franchise quarterback <laughs> for the next fifteen years. Um, so you got to like your odds there. But I, I think that's the pick, man. I think you got to go with Deshaun Watson. All right, you so. don't think they might be a little, you know, gun shy of picking a quarterback round one after what's happened with um, what's his face? I can't remember his name right now. Gino. Yeah. Well, he wasn't. He was a little gun shy. I think they're a little worried, but I think well, Gino was a Gino was a second round pick. I think if I'm if I'm yes, not mistaken. Yes, he was. He was in second round, Chris. right? Um, oh well, he, he, I think he dropped. Either like, way, the yeah. second round. Either he dropped, way, yeah, he was supposed to go in the first, and he dropped right. to them. I don't. I, it's tough, man. I don't think that me per. This is me choosing. Do I think the Jets will end up choosing him? More than likely not. Um, Fournette's another guy. Maybe I see them uh, going after here too. If he's available, it maybe they shock people. But like I said, I think they're going to try and address the secondary with Revis leaving. But I think the pick should be Watson. Um, we we talked about this when we watched that game right after that national title game. I remember we came on the show that week and we said, to me, there's no there's no doubt this guy should go first. You know, but Miles Garrett is just that that much of a you know a, a game changing and a difference making player that he's got to go first overall. But uh, I I just like Watson's intangibles. I think what he brings to the table. I think he's a true leader. He's a winner. I'll tell you that yeah. much. He may not be the most accurate, and and you know he might not have all the the stats in terms of uh you know accuracy and things like that. But he's a winner. He wins yeah. when it counts. All right, so here we Absolutely. go. Number seven, the Los Angeles Chargers are on the clock, and Chris, you're making the pitch. Doesn't even sound right, but all right. So pick number seven for the L.A. Chargers. We are going to select, let's see. Uh, yep, I just crossed off Jamal Adams. We're going to go with Malik Hooker uh, from Ohio State. They call him Malik the Freak. Um Basically, he's he's just a beast. Uh, he was tied for second, I think, in in interceptions last year. Uh, he's got the speed. He's got the instinct in the in the backfield to to be a ball hawk, and that's what they need. You know, they they miss they miss Eric Weddle. You know, he was that guy in their in their in their backfield. So I think he could instantly uh, walk on and, and be that Eric Weddle presence for him. All right. So now on the clock at number eight, the Carolina Panthers, Anthony. It's your selection. Yeah. That, with the eighth pick for the Panthers, I'm going to select running back Leonard Fournette at LSU. Um, I've been pretty consistent with this is the pick the Panthers need to make. Uh, Jonathan Stewart just hasn't been a consistent enough for a running back to put him in an offense with Cam Newton, who is just who can do amazing things for you. I yeah. think Leonard Fournette's power game it's similar to how Stewart plays, but I think you know he's just a game. Just he better. can make a difference. He's a better yeah to me. He's a better running back. And I think that's a huge deal there. Kelvin Benjamin, you still got, you know, as your number one receiver. This is a team that can, they need a couple pieces. They're not, you know, in a full rebuild, yeah, full rebuild despite, you know, having a losing season. But this will, this will go a long way for them. Uh, another team, like I said, again, that's looking for a replacement corner. But I feel like Lattimore not being there, this is something they might be able to address in the second round because they're still trying to replace Josh Norman. So, uh, but yeah, the pick for me is Leonard Fournette. I agree with you, man. I think he matches up that style really well. Yeah, I would be excited if he drops that far and Carolina can pick him up. I think that would be an exciting uh, addition to the team. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so now on the clock for the Cincinnati Bengals, we have Chris. For the Cincinnati Bengals, I think they need to address their defensive line. Um, I really think that's what they – what they need to address. And I think they're going to go with, uh, well, I, not I think, we are going to go with Derek Barnett from Tennessee. Um, I think I like he's, yeah, I think he's a monster. Uh, 33 sacks over the past three years. So he's consistently getting double digit sacks pretty much on average. Um, I think he, yeah, he, he passed Reggie White in terms of the all time sack leader for Tennessee. So, I mean, that's, that's, that's all you got to say about his, his pass rushing ability. So, um, I think he'll be able to get to Ben Roethlisberger, Joe Flacco, uh, and whoever the Browns select, which we'll get to later. All right. Now on the clock at number 10, the Buffalo Bills. I will be selecting for them. And you lose Stephen Gilmore. That's a hard loss. But their quarterback got really beat up last year. 
So when a quarterback gets beat up, what do you need? You need offensive, offensive line. line. Wow. I'm going to take, with the number 10 pick, the best offensive lineman in the draft, Ryan Ramzeski from Wisconsin, offensive tackle. Ramchick? Yeah, Ramchick. I'm sorry. Pretty sure it's Ramchick. Ramchick. Yeah, I'm not Ramchick. sure. Ramzeski sounds that. better. Yes. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure I, someone's going to tell him how to say it when he gets on. I just think, uh, you know, people are saying, "What about quarterback?" They said Tyron Taylor's going to stay there, and he's not a bad. Everyone complained about him last year. When he got his number one target back last year, towards the end of the season, he started lighting it up again. He just, he, I think he needs offensive line help, um, and I think he's going to get it with this guy. I think this guy's the best tackle in the draft. I mean, really, there's no one good in this draft in terms of offensive linemen. I think the Bills are going to jump on the best guy right off the bat. Okay, interesting. Right. I've yet um, no 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 uh, nothing against you, but I have yet to see that mocked anywhere. That that that's anywhere in any mock draft. I haven't seen one. I think crack the top fifteen. But hey, you may be on yeah, something. I think he's definitely a first round talent. But everything I've seen yeah. is towards the lower end of that. Yeah, the lower I just, mid. I just think point. like you know, as you've seen past drafts, you've seen Coughlin last hey. year. You need <laughs> offense. Yeah, no, I agree with you on that. I'm not disagreeing with I that. I know it's I just, just early. Don't... I just feel, you know, if the Bills really need a legit pass blocker, and that's just me. We'll see how it works out. That's all right, Anthony. There's there's some other yeah. players that we can start picking out, so that's all that's good. That's right. That's Give it. Us an extra pick there. So, number 11, we have the New Orleans Saints. Anthony, you're up for the Saints. All right, so uh, I'll tell you who I pick first, and we'll talk about it. Uh, with the... Uh, 11th pick in the first round uh, with the New Orleans Saints. We'll select O.J. Howard. I love it. I love that pick. Out of Alabama. I love that pick. Relax, bro. I love that because I I just talked about it with you the other day about that, Chris. Yeah. I think they're still trying to find that replacement. Um, I know they have Fleener there, but I think he's still going to have a shot, and it'll help Howard kind of insert himself into the offense. And if Fleener maybe does step up, they got a two tight end system again, and usually that works pretty well for a guy. A guy that, <clears throat> pardon me, geez, that, uh, you know, can sling the ball like that in Drew Brees. So you got to like it. Um, another guy I had being thought about here was Reuben Foster. But obviously with what's going on right now that he failed his drug test. Yeah. Um, this this well, late says it was game diluted, with a week to go. Diluted is the same as failed. That's yeah. basically what well, they said. Well, he's saying it's because he was sample, sick but... and it was stuff in his sick. We'll find out. Well, you'll find out exactly, but with a week to go, that might not get cleared up until right. after the draft, so that could exactly. hurt his knock. Not saying he won't make the NFL, but he might not go in the top ten like there was once talked about. Well, he was, so, he was yeah. talked about in the top uh, five. If he, drops, if he drops and it was just a health concern and you know it was just a freak thing, whoever picks him up in the second round or whatever round he drops to, I think it's going to get a huge bargain. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So Let now, me ask you, uh, for, for the 11th pick, uh, I know you said that you had another – another pick in mind with with foster but did you have someone else in mind anyone else that came to mind maybe a third pick um i didn't really think too far because i figured that oj howard was definitely going to be there i didn't think anyone would take him earlier um pretty much yeah but yeah i just had those two there's another linebacker on my uh list but i'll keep him unnamed at this moment so just so no one else brings did him up yet a, but you yeah, i got gotcha. you well what i was saying what i was no. going to allude to basically UCLA? was what what do you think what do you think about Christian McCaffrey there? I know it's kind of early, but just no, no. in the system that it, that the Saints have, you know, he's 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 almost like a Darren Sproles type, but but better, but but bigger, but but you know, someone who can run the ball in between the tackles, but can also pass catches, cast pass catches from Drew Brees and and take him for a touchdown. What do you think? I, I like yeah, the no. idea, but nah. Yeah. I think I think it's something they'll think about. Um, they haven't really had like a Reggie Bush, uh, you know, Darren Sproles, like you said, someone to come out of the backfield and make those plays. They haven't really had that, and that's another thing. I think they need an offensive weapon though. Breeze isn't getting younger. I they agree. need to build some. You know, they just lost Brandon Cooks. They just blast Cooks exactly. They have some receivers still, but the running back and the tight end, like I said, it's Fleener can play, but it seems like since he left Indianapolis, he kind of lost that step that he had there with. You know, Andrew Luck, that was kind of a security blanket type thing. So we'll kind of have to see. All uh, right. break, I think for fantasy schedule. purposes. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, the NFL schedule has officially just been we, released. We will, break, we will break news for all our teams <laughs> as it happens. Yes. So yeah. right now, oh, yeah, Chris, right there. you're on the clock again with the Browns. 
Whew. All right. So the Browns can go several different ways here because obviously they're they're the team with the most needs. Um, I think they will go with Mitch Trubisky. I I think that's where they will go. That's not where I'm going to go, but I think that's where they might go. I mean, they've had private sessions with him. I think they want to rebuild at quarterback, so I think they may pick him. But since I am the one making the pick for him, I'm going to shore up. I'm going to pick a cornerback. I think that they need help pretty much, like I said, all over. But I think their secondary definitely needs help. So I'm going to go with Garen Conley from Ohio. I, like I know that he. Pick. I know he was. He's moving up know, a lot of, of draft boards. He is, and and he. I think he was overshadowed, you know, in in Ohio by by um, uh, Lattimore. Lattimore. Mm-hmm. But but technically, statistically speaking, he had a better year than Lattimore. He his passer rating when thrown to him was much less, was much lower than Lattimore. So I think he is a great sneaky player right there. I don't think they're going to take him in, in you know, the real draft. But and for this mock draft, I think they, if they can snag up a, cor- a good, solid cornerback right there, I think that's a good good place to rebuild. Real quick, just breaking it out right now. Thursday night game will be the Chiefs at the Patriots. And also announced on Sunday, the first Sunday night game will be at Dallas, Giants at Dallas again, like last season. So those are the breaking things right now. So now we're back to you, Anthony. You're on the clock at number 13 for the Cardinals. All right. Uh, with the 13th pick, the Arizona Cardinals will select wide receiver Mike Williams out of Clemson. Um, I've seen different receivers going in this spot. I think Mike Williams <clears throat> is the most similar to Larry Fitzgerald with size yeah. and ability. So I think trying to get someone to fill in that role, considering they uh, traded Michael Floyd. This pa- well, I shouldn't say traded him. They cut him this past yeah. season. Uh, that's a spot that's open now. They were probably hoping Floyd would eventually take over that number one role with John Brown being number two. So I think that uh, Mike Williams really would insert very well into that offense there and uh, become a, a legitimate one-two uh, punch there with Larry Fitzgerald until, you know, Fitzgerald decides that he wants to retire and he'll take that role over. So I'm going to go with Mike Williams there. He showed a lot in that national title game as well. You have back-to-back uh, primetime games. Week two, you're also, you have Monday Night Football, the Giants. Um, uh, who are we playing? Uh, I just saw it. Let me back it up. Unbelievable. I love man. how you can just rewind. The Lions. Ah, oh, Jesus. I, I like your pick there, Anthony, at Mike Williams, because, excuse me, I, I've seen a few uh, mock drafts take John Ross at that point, at that position, at that mm-hmm. pick, uh, over Mike Williams. But I feel like they need someone like Larry Fitzgerald and not necessarily uh, like John Brown. Uh, well, John Ross, I think, is... Just a little too small for for that position in in terms of what they like to do. I mean, I know they like to sling the ball downfield, but I think Larry Fitzgerald is the prototype that they want to they want to continue to have in their system. So if they can put Mike Williams and just slot him in right there where Larry Fitzgerald is playing now, then I think they'll have continued success. So I I like that. The Ruskins just got their first primetime game, unless they're on a Thursday before that. But they're going to be playing. At the Chiefs, week four on Monday night. Oh, God. I do not envy you guys on that game. And the Titans got their Monday night football. We're playing week six again at the Colts. They're coming to Tennessee. That should be a good one. That should be. I'm really looking forward to that Redskins-Chiefs game, man. In in Kansas City, that's a tough one. All right, here we go. Chris, you're back up. And the Redskins got another Monday night football at the Eagles on week seven. Nice. Another one. So now, Chris, you're up actually for the Philadelphia Eagles at number 14. At number fourteen, we're just gonna pass. We're just gonna let him. We're just gonna pass. Let the Redskins get that pick. Yeah. Uh, so at fourteen, um, I think they have a lot of issues on defense, but I think that what they need in terms of this mock draft is someone to support and maybe lift a little bit of the workload off of Carson Wentz because we know that he's a good player. But I, I don't think he can do it all. Um, and I think that someone that could be a workhorse for this team and someone that maybe reminds them of Brian Westbrook, who was someone that could run the ball, pa- catch the ball. He was a triple threat in terms of that he could, he could be a special teamer too. I think, I think I'm going to go with Christian McCaffrey at this, at this pick. Um, okay. 
I, I, he can carry the ball 25, 30 times. You know, he can play special teams, like I said. I think he's a game changer. Um, and I think that's what the Eagles might be looking for at this spot. All right. I, like I am up. Pick. I am up now at 15 for the Colts. And the Colts, they're very, very interesting with this pick. I've been trying to figure out what, what they could go here. Um, I'm going to go with the Nets. I'm going to go with the first. I had the first surprise pick. I'm going with the second surprise pick. Anthony, me and you have just talked about this guy recently. He's moving up on a lot of draft boards. Running back Joe Mixon will be going to the Colts at number 15. Wow. Wow. I don't know about that, man. Yeah, you I think really Dallas don't know Puck's about gonna that. Get leaked like that? I think he, yeah. he's been having a lot of bad thing coming out that, about him. And I think, and they've said before this draft, if he did not have that issue, Mitson would be one of the top three guys selected in the first I, round. And I agree. And that's why I think it's still going to cost him that second round, I think. But hey, I, you never never say never when it comes to the draft, man. Hey, this but, is Matthew's draft, so. Yeah, bold we'll pick. pick bold pick. I'm sorry. I, I like Mitson. I mean, no, don't apologize, I'm man. Sorry, man. I like him. So, Anthony, we're back to you, and you'll be selecting for the Baltimore Ravens. Um, with the 16th pick, I'm sticking with uh, the last pick I made at pick the receiver. We're going right back with receiver here, and for the Ravens, I'm choosing uh, Corey Davis, wide receiver out of Western Michigan. Oh, there goes my draft think, board. <laughs> yep, I yep. think that this is – the Ravens that. need that receiver. Um, again, this is another team where you need to get more help on the offensive side. I know the defense was a little iffy, but – uh, you really need it. You really. I don't like their running back situation that much. Um, I like uh, the young guys they have, but he. Ha uh, man, I can't think of his name. He had had a bad knee most of the season last year, so you didn't get to see a lot from him. Uh, Kenneth Dixon, that's his name. That, that, that just came to me. So you know they they have a lot of uncertainty there. So I'd like to see what they can do. But I think if you can get Corey Davis here, it's a nice little you know nice little pickup to help out the offense. Yeah, and and losing Steve Smith, they need they need yeah. to. They need to have somebody to replace him. So I like that pick, too. All right, Chris, we're back to you. We finally got on the 17th pit. The Washington Redskins are on the clock. Chris, it's on you. This is tough, man, because there's a few different ways that this can go. Um, I've seen some draft boards pick Dallin Cook. I could get excited about it a little bit, but I, I really think we have other needs. I've seen Mitch Trubisky, if he's still available, him picked here. Um, again, I think we do need to address the quarterback situation because it's about 99% that, you know, we're not going to have Kirk Cousins here after this season. So that may be an option. Um, but I think if we're talking about right now what's going to help us win, I think that we need to address the defense. Um, and I'm so I'm going to go with defense with this pick. And uh, where was it? I I would also have Ruben Foster here, but with that drug test, I'm not sure if that's going to affect how the Redskins view him. So I'm going to go with Hassan Reddick from Temple. Um, I think he is. <laughs> no, no, I love that pick. I've been yeah. saying that for a while. That uh, yeah, if they dropped him, that needs to happen. Yeah, I mean, he, he's, he's a monster to getting in the backfield. You know, he's got, I think, 22-something tackles for a loss. Uh, his pro day over was 10 in his sacks combine, which is off the charts. Yeah, he, he, he was a – I think he was an edge rusher, but I think they're converting him to a linebacker um, right now. But basically, either way, he's got that instinct to find the ball, get to the ball, and get that ball carrier on the ground. So – um, I think that he's he's going to have an immediate impact on our linebacking core. So I'm going to go with Hassan Reddick. Oh, well, very nice. That would be a nice addition, I think. I, I yeah. agree. I, I think, honestly, I think the Redskins are going to go offense. I really think they're going to select a running back or a quarterback there. But I really hope they don't. I really hope we address the defense because we all know the Redskins can put up points. The problem is we allow other teams to put up more points. So yeah. I think Fair that's enough. where our problem is. Yay, we don't play the Steelers anymore on Thursday night. They I gave know. us the – I mean, we don't play the Jazz. They gave us the Steelers this year. Woo. Mm -hmm. There you go. I wanted to say a quick uh, shout-out to Bojo, too, one of our guests on the show, that Hassan Reddick is actually a Temple uh, product. So that's yes, Bojo's alum right there. And speaking of that, since we're talking about Thursday night games, Chris, I don't know if you saw it. It was announced earlier, and now it's official. Uh, the Redskins and the Giants are playing Thanksgiving night this year. At home. It's in Washington, right, in D.C.? Yep. Yep. All right. So, Matt, I'm trying. I'm actually. I actually plan on going to that game up in the Pittsburgh. Yeah. 
Yeah, one of my buddies that works as a Steelers fan, he, we all we do is talk crap to each other. That's going to be a sad <laughs> drive home, man. <laughs> so, speaking of Tennessee, we are on the clock at 18. We took a deep. We took a defensive back in the first in the first pick. We're going wide receiver here, and we're going with yep. the fastest man alive, yep. John Ross. Now, let me ask you before you get. Well, you're going to explain as well. Yeah. When you did, you have a hierarchy of receivers. Was he number one on your three no, of the top? I the wanted. Receiver? I wanted Davis. Over Mike Williams. You. Uh, no, I wanted Mike. I, just, I knew. I knew Mike wasn't probably going to drop to me. So Corey Davis was my initial pick here. And you screwed that all up when you did it. Thanks. So both of you guys have screwed up both my pitches today. Hey, man. You got to do what you got to do, bro. And really, I, if Chris would have taken, the rest would have taken him for whatever reason, I would have been scrambling right now. So Fair enough. So John Ross, uh, Mariota needs someone who can just span the field for him. Um, you know, we got Rashard Matthews. We got, you know, Dwight Freeney. Eh, they're just okay. Dwight Fre- not Why did I say Dwight Freeney? Delaney Walker. Good Lord. Delaney Walker's, you know, one of the top five tight ends. Rashard Matthews really burst on the scene, but I think Ross is someone who can make the field work for Mariota, and he's the type of guy where if Mariota's scrambling, Ross can just, you know, what um, Mike Wallace and what Antonio Brown does for Ben Rosberg can just go down the field, run a nine, and can beat probably most of the cornerbacks in the league with that 4.22. So I'm going, especially on bootlegs, if Ross is doing a crossing route across the field, hoo now, um, two questions. First, I'm going to ask you one, Matt, about the Titans, and then, Chris, I want to go back to the Redskins for a second. All right. For you first, if the Titans, there's been a lot of talk that the Titans want to get another tight end. If they take O.J. Howard 5, does that change their whole entire draft? If we take Howard 5, we'll probably go DB with this pick. Okay. And um, do you think it's a realistic shot they do take Howard 5? I know it's rumbled about. That doesn't mean it happens, but it's rumbles. Right. Um, God, I think it all depends on what happens. Like with Chris, since he took Lattimore, I think maybe they do go Howard. Now, let's say Lattimore and both Adams go three and four for some reason. Like, Anthony, you could have taken Adams with that pick. Maybe Howard, maybe I would have taken Howard with that pick. So I think it all depends yeah. what go, what happens. But also, Titans could trade out of number five if they want. I mean, they have the yeah, power. I, That's the big thing. You you think that's a possibility for some reason, you know, maybe Lattimore and one of the other, either Jamal Adams. If those two gone, I could see Tennessee dropping down to maybe, maybe with you the You don't have Jonathan Allen or Solomon Thomas there if they're available at five? Uh, a, st- a stud defensive lineman? I'm just, that's what you got to think about I mean, about it's here. hard, you man. Really, I don't, it depends on what, me, but it depends on what offers, offers come in. Because you got to think Tennessee doesn't have a second round. So if they could keep 18 and a team says, hey, look, we'll, uh, let's go with the Bills. The Bills may want to get Watson over uh, the Jets. Well, like, cool, we'll give you 10 in our second rounder. Let us move up. And that could be a possibility. Yeah, I agree with you on that. For so, sure. Now your and question then, Chris, Chris, real quick, before we go to the next pick. Up, do, you think there's any, do you think there's any chance the Redskins get Dalvin Cook at 17 and grab a running right. back? Since it's an uncertainty with, uh, with Matt Jones. He's kind of up in the air if he's even going to be asserted. And then, obviously, you have the surgeons of Rob Kelly. But do you think maybe they spend that pick on Dalvin Cook? I really think it's a it's a pretty good possibility. Um, I mean, our running game is pretty much atrocious ever since we uh, moved away from uh, Alfred Morris. And, and like you said, we don't know what the heck our, our running back situation is right now. So Dalvin Cook is a flashy play. You know, he's a big name guy uh, yeah. coming from Florida State. I could definitely see us going offense, but I really hope that we don't. I, I think our immediate need is defense. And, you know, if, if yeah. we can... If we can address our immediate need right now, I would rather do that. All right. And if I Leonard, do think there's a good possibility. If Fournette falls to 17, lands in your lap, you guys take him? No, no questions asked? You think that's a pick there? Or you same thing with Cook <laughs> to address defense? Or do you think Fournette you can't pass at 17? I think Fournette is a different story. I think okay. if he's there at 17, you kind of have to pick him. He's He is just that much better than Dalvin Cook. But yeah. um, I, I really don't think he's going to fall that far. Yeah, I can't see it either. I just I love to play the what-if game. Yeah. So yeah, If he does, I think you kind of have to jump on it. But I, I, realistically speaking, I don't think he falls that far. And I think the the most important need, other than, other than you know, picking up one of the game changers in the top 10, would be defense. So real quick, the scheduling real quick, just take a quick break at number 18. Uh, the Redskins have one, two, three, five primetime games. They have th- 
three prime time games in a five week span. They do. They have Oakland, Kansas City back to back prime time bye week. Hey. And then after the bye week, they have San Francisco. Then they have another prime time against the Eagles. And then you know how they have the Giants on Thanksgiving. Yeah. They come back a week later on Thursday night and play the Cowboys. Oh man! It's so they they something to somebody. What, what, Chris? <laughs> what did you guys do to someone? I have no, no idea. That's As, are those all those games on the road or some of those home? I know the Giants games at home. Is is the Oakland game in Oakland? I, I would have to go look again. I just went off of it. Yeah, but, okay. um, I know Kansas City. I just I just want to know what they did. You guys have four <laughs> prime time. Like I said, you open Dallas, then you play Monday night against the Lions. You have week six prime time against the Broncos, and then the Redskins. And that's the Thanksgiving game, right? The Redskins. Yeah. It's getting on here. Yeah. All right. All right. Let me look at the Redskins. You said you want to see which ones are home and away. The they're home against see, Oakland. Yeah. Away against Kansas okay, City, that's good. That's a- away against the Eagles, right. home Giants, away against the Cowboys. But that's brutal, man. Giants and then Cowboys a week later on. Whew. Talk Eagles, about Giants, uh, Cowboys, man. Mm-hmm. God, and they play the Eagles on Monday night. Jeez, can we say the Monday night massacre? Uh, I don't. Um, don't I say know, that uh, again, man. <laughs> what Monday night massacre? Yeah. Same. That was pretty bad. All right, so let's get Can't back to stuff, it. Man. I know. I know some people that were there. Let's get back to it. Uh, we're at 19 we're right now. It. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I just want to say this. With Tampa, that you're talking about, you want to talk about a bad schedule. The Buccaneers play, I just got a text from James. The Buccaneers play the Giants on October 1st, and then on October 5th play the Patriots. Oof. So oh. in a, in a four-day stretch, they're going to have those games. Lucky yeah. them. So, Chris, you're <laughs> on the clock for the Buccaneers. Who are they taking? All right. For the Buccaneers, um, uh, you know, one pick I've been seeing a a little bit and that I think maybe could work um, is that Dalvin Cook falls to the Buccaneers and they and they pick him up. Um, You know, they they have muscle hamster, but, you know, he really hasn't produced other than his rookie season. Um, And they have a couple other, you know, backup guys, but no one is the number one outright running back and Dalvin Cook can be that guy I mean he's already in Florida is that your pick he's gonna take a little drive to Tampa Bay yeah that's my, that's my pick I'm picking Dalvin Cook for Florida from Florida State so he reunites um, with Mr. You know, three, Winston three three yeah and basically three back-to-back thousand yard seasons in in college football I mean he's he's pretty much proven as you can get um other than Leonard Fournette I think he's the the next best guy in terms of overall running back uh, workhorse all right. Now, number 20, the Denver Broncos. Anthony, you're on the clock. Uh, number 20, this one's one of those picks that uh, I'm picking. I'm making this pick because I think this is where they're going to go. Um, this is why you taking Ramsey kind of changes the plans for me coming down here. Um, I think they're going to get an offensive tackle here, and I think they're going to take the offensive tackle out of Alabama, Cam Robinson. Uh, I think that's a pick they need to make. Running back was another thing I saw maybe them taking here. Uh, with the uns- with C.J. Anderson having you know he's hot and cold, um, yeah. you know I know I know they had uh, the rookie last year Booker kind of Devonte came onto the scene a little bit too, but I think that's something maybe they look at because he gives them out of that you know out of the backfield capability with uh, McCaffrey. But yeah, I'm gonna go with offensive tackle Cam Robinson here. I think they shore up that offensive line for these young quarterbacks. All right, now on the clock for the Detroit Lions at 21, Chris. The Detroit Lions, I think what they have to address right now is their defensive line. Um, I think they're going to go for someone either, uh, probably most likely, I'm guessing they're going to go as for an edge rusher. Um, and the, which edge rusher is the problem? That's, that's what I have, like three edge rushers here that I can pick. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go with Charles Harris from Missouri. Um, I think he's, he's, Basically got 30 sacks, 30 tackles in the backfield, um, 16 sacks in the past two seasons. He's pretty, he's pretty, he's pretty consistent. Pretty consistent. I, think, I think two years, two years uh, all, uh, second all time SEC. So I, I think he'll be able to step right in there on the defensive line. All right, I'm at 22 with the Dolphins now, and I'm gonna go with some secondary help. I feel like, especially in that division you're in, uh, you know, you got Watkins, you got Brady. Uh, you know, the Jets, you know, you got the old Decker and Marshall. I'm going to go with Marlon Humphrey, cornerback from Alabama. 
I just think if you're going against Tom Brady, you know, you're going to need you're going to need some uh, cornerback help there. And I think this guy, you know, he's all American, played national championship caliber level. So I think Marlon Humphrey is going to be the pick there for the Dolphins. Okay. So at 23, here we go. The New York Football Giants. Anthony, you're on the clock. Man, I'm excited I, to hear this. I literally have five names and I've crossed them all out because they've been said. <laughs> um, it, it, I've gone. I'm going so back and forth with the Giants to pick because I'd love for them to get an offensive tackle. Um, I like Garrett Bowles, but exactly, just throw the papers because I like Bowles, but I feel like he's not the best here. Um, I prefer Ramzik. Or I'm, uh, I'm just going to say Ryan because we've had the debate on how to say his last name correctly. Uh, the kid from Wisconsin. Um, another guy I liked here was O.J. Howard, but I think tight end is not somewhere they need to go. Pass rushers again is at a premium, and then. There's this guy that I've seen jumping little by little up into the first round. And it's a position the Giants could use help at because right now they're talking about B.J. Goodson being their starting linebacker uh, who's all coming off his rookie year. And I think if the Giants can't get this offensive tackle, I'm going to I'm gonna go with the defensive side of the ball. And I'm going to say the Giants draft the linebacker out of Florida, Jared Davis. The guy has an amazing physical ability to play the game. Um, he's very He's quick. And his his athleticism will prove for him to be a great player in that defense, and I think that he'll easily start to pick up the game on that defense. And that defense can protect him with how good they were last year. They really kept most of the players together outside of Hankins. Uh, that's another guy I had on my board there, Malik McDowell from Michigan State, the defensive tackle. But I just think that the Giants are going to look to get someone that's going to be someone that's a huge playmaker. And while defensive tackles are important, I think having that linebacker in the center is a, is a crucial part to. Uh, to your team, and I think that he could definitely be a big part of his defense in that linebacker and core, where I think the Giants are weakest on the team overall is that linebacker and core, offensive and defensively. All right. I'm on the pick now for the Oakland Raiders, and this guy, we said, been having some trouble, was a top-five pick probably, and you got Kalia Mack. They need something up the middle, middle linebacker. I'm going with Reuben Foster of Alabama and making the linebacking core for the Oakland Raiders one of the most vicious and talk about unit in the NFL. Fair enough. You pair this guy with Khalil Mack? Huh? Was Davis on your radar at all, the guy I drafted, or not? Was he, like, under Foster? Uh, He was a little bit under Foster. I also had Zach Cunningham up there. I really liked him out of Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt. But Foster, this drop, I don't think he'll drop past this. I think just put him in there with Khalil Mack, playing side linebacker, and you're not going to be able to run the ball in this team at all, I don't think. Okay. I like it. Anthony, you are back up for the Houston oh, Texans. Jesus. I didn't know I was up again. Yep. Chris now gets uh, a long wait. Yep. Man. So I think we got to talk about the position that at one point was saying at one point might have four of them drafted in the first round. Uh, yep. We've only had one so far taken, right? If I'm, uh, if I'm not exactly mistaken. That's exactly what I was yep. thinking. Yep. Mr. Watson. Mm-hmm. Yep. I think if you're if you're the Texans here, you have to think. If, I, I had them from the beginning when I did my original mock draft taking uh, Mahomes out of Texas Tech. But if Trubisky's there at 25, yep. and you're the Houston Texans, I can't see you passing up. And that's my pick, the 25th pick. I'm going to take Mitchell Trubisky out of UNC. I think that this guy, at one point, they're still saying, I know we didn't do any trades in this because we are just doing straight picks. There's right. still a huge amount of talk that the Browns, there's they're they're split that they want to take Trubisky yeah. one, but they know he won't be there at twelve. Um, even though when we did it, he would be there at twelve. And there's talk now that they're gonna p- call on the 49ers to take the second pick from them, and then give up you know a pretty good amount so they can get Garrett and Trubisky one and two back to back. That's yeah. nuts. And solidify that they get the two guys they want. You know. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I, how I opened it saying. Everyone is a consensus that Miles Garrett is the number one overall pick, but everyone except for the Cleveland Browns because they, exactly. they really are struggling whether or not to take Trubisky at number one. Yeah. I, and I then can't if, if they can do what you just said, then they might just do it. Yeah. Because if they the can't Jets, pick between either one, then. Yeah. One of the Jets or someone like the Bills, they're going to try and stronghold them and make it look like they're going to take him so that they move up. If they want him that bad, the Browns are going to move up. And I think the Browns are going to because they know that Garoppolo is not going to happen from what it's seeming like that's almost an uncertainty. And if they yeah. want their next quarterback, they're going to have to move up past 12 is what it's, ma- it's being made to look out uh, as, at this moment in time. All right. But so- for the Texans, Trubisky at 25, if that ends up happening, that's a huge, that's a huge score for them. 
I agree. All right, so now on the clock is me with the Seattle Seahawks, and I'm going to do one of my surprise ones here. Uh, we saw last year, Earl Thomas. He's coming back, but is he going to be 100% is the question. This team needs secondary help. They also could use a return guy, because then they weren't they the ones who went and got Devin Hester in the playoffs, and he just did crap for them. Was returning kits out of the end zone, wasn't getting nowhere. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't. They signed him late. He was probably just wasn't ready. I'm gonna go with the guy who's actually been mocked here in a couple of mock drafts, but then also other mock drafts. He's in the second or third round. Jabril Peppers out of Michigan. I think he is a dynamite yeah. player. I think he is a hybrid. He could play safety for you. He can also play linebacker. He's also a big return specialist. I'm going to go with Jarrell Preppers here because of his versatility and that defense for Seattle. They love versatility players, and this guy, can you can put him anywhere on the field, and I think he can line up. So I'm going to go with Jarrell Preppers for Seattle. I, I, have, I was hoping that he, he would fall to me uh, later on in this draft, but uh, for the Steelers? that was a good pick, I think. Yeah, actually, that's exactly right. where I so am. Now, well, speaking of you, you're on the clock for the Kansas City Chiefs. Kansas City Chiefs. All right. So at pick number 27, I have an interesting pick, I believe, here. I am going to go with Patrick Mahomes at number 27. Um, I've seen him. I've seen them take a wide receiver here in a couple mock drafts. I've seen them take, uh, I think, a cornerback. Uh, but I've also seen a lot Patrick Mahomes being taken right here at 27. Um, in Andy Reid's system, he's a gunslinger. I mean, that's basically one of the number one things that they that they have to say about this kid. And, and in Andy Reid Andy Reid's system, that's what he wants. You know, he wants a, a quarterback that can throw the ball, and and this guy can definitely throw the ball. Um, I know they already have a number one uh, quarterback, the number one game manager, so to speak. Uh, but I think that they that they can basically draft for the future, and I think they might draft Patrick Mahomes here. Okay, Anthony, you're on the clock with the Cowboys. <sighs> I don't want to help the Cowboys, man, and pick and make a pick for them. <laughs> I don't. I Do really what I don't. did for the Eagles, just pass. Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind passing it. Seriously, uh, <laughs> Cowboys. I think it's it's uh, for me. I think it's secondary that or defensive line. Um, I've gone back and forth. A lot of the guys you've already mentioned at corner, obviously, are great stars. But the, these next three corners I have on my list all bring something different to the team. Um, I think they're going to address corner because I think Brandon Carr is, you know, he's getting up there in age. I'm pretty sure they lost Claiborne in the offseason. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident, and I think that he left. So I feel like their secondary is always a little suspect. And the guy I actually have them taken is a guy that I think not only uh, – this is what it came down to for me – after Dwayne Harris left, you know, to the Giants, he was their main return guy. I, they got Des Bryant back there on punts sometimes. I know they have Beasley back there as well doing it. Um, I think this guy could set in and not only be a, you know, a great cover corner for them, but I feel like he could be their return man. And I'm taking cornerback out of USC, Adore Jackson. Um, I think he inserts well into there. There was another corner I liked too, which was uh, Kevin King from Washington. Big yep. physical corner, 6'3". Um, but I think that this guy does more for the team with the Dory Jackson joining the team. So that's my pick for the Cowboys. All right. I am now on the clock for the Green Bay Packers. And what screwed the Packers the most? Defensive back, defensive back, defensive back. I'm actually going to go with another high-rated cornerback, and I'm going to go with Trey Davis White, cornerback from UCLA. I really liked his stuff during the combine. He has really posted. He really did really good at LSU. And the Packers, they need secondary help. They got torched by these passing offenses in the in the playoffs, especially the um, excuse me the Atlanta Falcons. So I'm gonna go with White from LSU. Chris, with your final pick, you are picking for the Steelers. Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, my first pick for the Steelers was gonna be Jabril, Jabril Peppers from Michigan. I really think he would fit there pretty well in a Troy Polamalu role. Um, you know, obviously they miss him, and, and if they could find someone to mimic what he does, I think that that would be their number one goal to do that. Um, but I'm going to go with a different need that I think that I think that they need, and that this is one that their uh, their late owner said that they need to do, which is get to the quarterback. So I'm going to go with an edge rusher here. Uh, I'm going to go with Takaris McKinley from UCLA. Um, was he picked already? 
No, he was not. You're good. That's yeah, a good I was, was going to say, wait a minute. I thought I saw that pick, but there's no, I didn't put a mark there. So I'm going to go with that. I, I think that the Steelers, when they were in their heyday, um, it was all about defense, and that defense was swarming to the quarterback left and right. And I think this is a good start uh, to jumpstart the, the defensive line and, and get to the quarterback. Um, you know, they definitely need to get to Joe Flacco. Um, they definitely need to get to Andy Dalton, and I think that's going to be one way to do it. All right, so now we're on 31. we got two pitches left. It's time for the loser of Super Bowl, the Atlanta Falcons. Anthony, go ahead. All right, uh, but this pick right here, I think the the Falcons take an offensive lineman and kind of continue to build on what they did in the offseason this past year by getting Alex Mack, and I got them taking Forrest Lamp, Forrest Lamp the offensive guard out of Western Kentucky. Um, I think that helps that bulk of that interior line, and that continues to protect Matt Ryan and you know with the running backs of uh, Freeman and Coleman. So that yep. continues to solidify that team on the offensive side where I still think they're juggernauts despite losing uh, the Super Bowl. All right, now we come down to the last pick for the Saints. And it's, it's I don't, you know, you guys throw me in a loop here. I feel like their pass rush wasn't really the best. And I can't believe this guy has dropped to me all the way to 32. This guy has been, predict, predict, um, yeah, been mocked all the way in the top 10. I'm going with Taco Charlton, edge rusher out of Michigan. I've seen this guy as high as number 10, uh, even to the Bengals at number 9. So I'm going with Taco Charlton. I think he's going to help them with the pass rush they have there, especially when you have to go against guys like Cam Newton, Jameis Winston. you got to get to the quarterback. So I'm going with Taco for this pick. Yep. And ladies and gentlemen, that is going to wrap it up for the first ever Shite Sports Talk 32 pick mock. I know I said we're going to go through our other predictions. We're not going to. I think we did it right here. We're going to see. We're going to. We're not. Um, next week, um, the show. We're going to try. We're going to try. It's up in the air, especially with the draft going on. We may want to watch it. But we're going to see how many pits we got right. We're going to see if my risky pits work. Uh, we're going to see if Trubisky is going to go higher than what we predicted. So. Um, I think he will. Yep. Yeah, That's, and we're the, big, the first big shock of the night. Who's it going to be? Is it going to be my A Joe Mixon? A lot of talk of uh, trades as well, of players that are on teams currently getting Richard traded. Richard Sherman for right Sheldon now Richard. is being linked to the Richard Titans Sherman. at 18. Yeah, so that's, 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 the one thing, that's the one thing we didn't account for here is trades. And, and we know it's not if it's going to happen, it's when it's going to happen. Yep. So um, that's really going to do it for us. Um, sorry. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say. Sorry for Paul not being here, but happy birthday to Simone again. So, that, yeah, that's going to wrap it up for us. Hey, so hey, we miss episodes all the time, uh, each and one of us. You know, we've all missed an episode. Paul gets Paul's a break every oh, once yeah. in a while. He deserves Paul, a break. Paul's the Iron Man. Paul's the Iron Man and the unsung hero of this show. Yep. So, also, Paul, um, much welcome. Well Enjoy it, man. We're going to have a little Shake Sports Talk reunion next week. Next Sunday, actually, we're all going to the baseball game, going out for some food afterwards. Anthony's making his first, I believe, your first trip up to D.C., isn't it? I believe. Yeah. At all? Never, never. Never. Never been to DC before, yeah. So as they You're say, the beginning thing, of the first couple of days. Yep, Friday we're going in. I know that. To the, to the DC. To the so um, enjoy some playoff hockey. Enjoy some playoff basketball. Go Wiz. Go Caps. Uh, baseball's in full swing, and hopefully we will see you next Thursday. If not, we'll be back again in two weeks to actually cover the NFL draft and let you know how we did. So for myself, Anthony. Chris and Paul out celebrating my aunt's birthday. Thank you for joining us. I hope you guys enjoy. Please comment below. Tell us what you think of our selections. Hit that subscribe button. Follow us on Facebook at uh, Facebook slash Shite Sports Talk. Twitter at Shite Sports Talk. Thanks everyone again and enjoy your evening. See ya. Have a good, good night, have a good night. everybody.